Dear was a what? Nah. Dear Stephen. This is a letter from you to yourself. The reason I'm writing this is because in 2022, something happened that changed you. It was painful, and you spent a long time processing it. But in the end, you managed to turn that pain into something positive. You let it motivate you, inspire you, fuel you. But you were still worried. You were worried because you know how your brain works. Sometimes when you want to remember something, you just can't. You know that a memory is somewhere in the archives of your mind, but you can't retrieve it. And that frustrates you, terrifies you even. You worry that by the time you're old and tired, ready for your life to flash before your eyes, the reels are going to be too blurry to remember what happened and what you left behind. That's why you decided to make a video, this video. You recognized what happened in 2022 was so important that you couldn't just let the memories slip through your fingers. Instead, you decided to take action by telling your story because that's just what you do. But something didn't feel right. You spent hours writing the same paragraph over and over again because even though you knew why you needed to make this, you felt like you had to find a way to justify it to your audience. You convinced yourself this expression of your pain was a trauma dump better suited for a therapist, not an audience of strangers hoping to be entertained. But you've been to a therapist, and you told them how creating videos makes you feel, and they told you to keep making them. You know that by doing this, when you are old and tired, you won't have to rely on your frail, unreliable memory to remember the life you lived. That's why I'm writing to you, Stephen, so you don't have to worry about what other people think. If you're reading this, that's okay. You'll have this forever, so you don't have to forget. But if you're watching this, hearing me speak the words, that's because you found the courage to hit publish because you believed it was worth sharing. You began 2022 in the dark, knowing full well that darker days were yet to come. But even so, you managed to find some small amount of light nestled next to a campfire with a stick and a marshmallow under the stars. On January 7th, you finished Outer Wilds. Outer fucking wilds, Stephen. I probably didn't even need to tell you the date because how could you forget? You actually started playing almost a full year prior, but it just didn't click until right after Christmas. You thought you were going to get COVID after being at that party, so you locked yourself in your room playing Outer Wilds day in and day out, only coming out to grab a meal or use the bathroom, remember? Let's be honest, you really just weren't ready the first time around because you weren't playing for the right reason. Instead of playing because you really wanted to, you played because you didn't want to feel left out of the conversation anymore and wanted to have another reason to connect with your friends that loved it. That's why it was so hard. You were closed off. You weren't ready to open yourself up to the possibilities. But that's what made it so rewarding when you did finish, because it came at just the right time. It was after mom told you she was leaving. That was difficult. Do you remember what the eye showed you? It showed you that even after she left, the world would keep spinning. Things would be okay because you weren't alone. And the best part was that she left you with so many memories. You were frantic. I can't think of another time you felt so compelled to make a video and the manner in which you did was just as unique. It wasn't like the other times you sat there rewriting the same sentence over and over again. The words just poured onto the page. You weren't sure mom would approve though. Like who would be okay with that being shouted from the rooftops. You were so nervous, like shaking with nerves, when you explained to her why you wanted to tell the world why she had to go. But instead of pushing back like you imagined she would, she just smiled and told you how proud she was. You're a good guy, Stephen, is what she said. That was a moment to remember forever. The funny thing is that 
Outer Wilds did so much more than prepare you for the end. It planted the seed of a new beginning. Remember when Elden Ring came out? You were so pressed because while the reviews were dropping perfect tens and it seemed like everyone was enjoying it, you just couldn't like it. You hated it, even. For as much of a landmark title as it was, something about it felt safe and by that virtue, disappointing. The way it challenged open world design was easily the highlight, but as it began to lean back into series conventions, you just felt uninspired. You asked yourself repeatedly, I like Dark Souls, why can't I enjoy this? And then you played Tunic. It was like a light switch went off in your head. At a fundamental level, Tunic's essence was not that dissimilar to Elden Ring's. And yet, you couldn't put it down. Something was different. It felt rougher, more raw, less distilled. And truthfully, the moment-to-moment -moment play wasn't much more than the glue between the aspects that kept you coming back. It was the essence of the world, how a perspective dictates how you see it. And with uncovering pages of the manual came a sense of mystery, ascribing meaning to your actions. It wasn't really about the expression of skill or overcoming the odds, but the discovery of it all. It felt like playing Dark Souls for the first time again. It felt like playing Outer Wilds again, because you had to learn new rules. That was it, Steven. You had to learn. Playing Outer Wilds taught you how to love learning again. And Tunic was just another exercise in a wider trend where the games that really stood out were primarily the ones that taught you. And this bled into your work as well. In March, you began the Herculean task of cataloging all of your thoughts regarding every single Star Fox game. And what you were left with was an increased respect for the entries that people have failed to give a chance. That project was kind of a mess. As the situation at home became more tense, writing was the one way you could take back some amount of control of your life. So you just kept writing. The scope grew out of control, and while you managed to set expectations low for the amount of interest and channel growth it would generate, you still hoped for more. There's probably a dozen ways you could have changed it to generate more views and acclaim. You probably could have made it a little less personal, and you could have made cuts to those sections you were excited about but weren't all too crucial to the overall message. But in spite of all you could have done, if you really could have go back and change things, you wouldn't. That Star Fox video taught you something so important. You're not a video essay, Steven. You're a storyteller. What was even more enriching than releasing your personal thoughts regarding why Star Fox 64 was a masterpiece, or why Zero was misunderstood, or why you believed Star Fox deserved one more chance, was digging just a bit deeper to discover the truth. By researching the history, reading the interviews, and understanding the intent, you were able to tell the best story you could. Don't ever forget, you are a storyteller. April 17th, 2022, Easter Sunday, was when mom left. It was at the beach, remember? Exactly where she would have wanted. It is important that you remember the sting, to remember nature's harsh truths as you began a new chapter, but also remember what it felt like to begin healing. You took a dark, early morning walk on the beach, and even though it was so hard to pick your head up, what the eye showed you was true. Over the water, the sun began to rise. The greeting of a new day. An assurance that the world would keep spinning. The next two months were quiet. Spent picking up the pieces, making the arrangements, and fixing up the house. All while dreading the arrival of June 25th, the last goodbye. But what you thought would be the second worst day of your life ended up being one of the very best. It was astonishing to see so many people from such different walks of life together for this celebration of life. And as the wind of mom's breath swayed the chimes, 
You brought honor to her memory. In August, you got sick. The date was the second because it was the day after you released the Star Fox video. After finally crossing the finish line, your reward was a COVID-19 infection. For real this time. What was even worse than the physical toll was the hopelessness that accompanied it. Everything you wanted to do required applying more friction to your body than simply lying in bed mindlessly scrolling. You scrolled so much that on several occasions, you refreshed the same page like five times in a row waiting for a new tweet to pop up. It was grim. Temporary, but grim. That was until the meds kicked in that allowed you to roll out of bed for a moment to do as you do and play some video games. Pikmin 3 was your choice for no other reason than the thought that you would probably make a video on it someday. But more importantly came the flood of more memories simply by opening up a small, dusty black box. It's funny how within this box lies a treasure trove of vivid memories from such a specific moment of time, a simpler moment, and another story to tell. But this story wasn't popular. It would have been easier to stay comfortable and just reflect upon the good memories. But with this project, you stretched yourself further to examine your capabilities. It wasn't perfect. It never could be perfect, but you tried your best. Remember in grade school when you would find any reason to skip? The smallest seed of a stomach ache was enough to convince yourself you were sick. You knew what you were doing, and mom did too. She let you stay home, but if you were going to LARP as a sick kid, you were going to feel what it was like to actually be sick. No video games only lying on the couch mindlessly watching daytime television for preschool aged children with a bowl of chicken soup. Getting sick was not an out or a break. It's a battle, sometimes a war with your own body that halts your progress and can't just be willed away. 2022 was the year that, after everything, you realized that every single day in good health is an absolute blessing. Every step you took, every meal you learned to cook, every restful night of sleep, simply being able to do those things was enough of a reward. It allowed you to embrace life's friction as it came, to stretch yourself and continue learning. So keep eating your damn greens, Steven, and throw some more salmon into the rotation if you want to keep remembering. On October 4th, you indulged in a moment of weakness. After years of neglect, it felt cathartic to hop back into Overwatch, one of your favorite games with feelings of optimism because it satiated that longing for competition. It felt good to be finally rewarded for staying loyal to a community that had long since become the laughing stock of gaming as a whole, and its fundamental changes targeting key areas of frustration were fulfilling to engage with. Even though you had carved out a new path for yourself, it was difficult to look at this new game without a longing for the past. And so you began grinding. You lost yourself in Overwatch once again, even derailing the project that was your primary focus. It wasn't long before you proved to yourself that you still had the ability to play at the level you once did. But this victory was anything but ceremonious. What would you do had you continued to grind? You couldn't become a pro. Even if you had the skill, your health would deteriorate at a rate that could be torturous to come back from. And for what opportunities? No amount of personal gratification would erase the fact that you were meant for something else. Perhaps if you had two lives, one for Steven and one for the professional Overwatch off-tank player Wizzawut, the latter would prove itself to be a less fruitless endeavor. But you don't have two. You have one. And living through Overwatch is living in the past. But that's okay. Because Overwatch showed you the joys of mentorship. Even in the event that you begin passing down what you've learned to the next generation, there's still more to learn. In a more practical sense, the past is a story. And those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. This chapter may be over. But that doesn't mean what you learned cannot be taken with you. That brings us to the end. 
With the turn of the season and many firsts, your slowly restoring sense of optimism began to fade with the waning hours of sunlight. The first birthday. The first Thanksgiving. The first Christmas. It was tough, and after dulling the pain with many superficial hits of dopamine, it became time for some real reflection. That's why on December 18th, you closed the book on this hell of a year exactly where it began. You completed Outer Wilds Echoes of the Eye not after a year of struggles, but in less than a week of playtime, in part due to all that you had learned. Truthfully, you had every intention of eventually returning to Outer Wilds to finish what you started, but there was something else stopping you in your tracks. Fear. This fear was a construct, Stephen. While you had overcome your own fears in so many instances this year, you were so hesitant to dig deeper into Outer Wilds, the game that spoke to you like no other, all because of a harmless text distinction. You carried this fear with you into the stranger. Even when there were no terrors to be found, you were unnerved. Remember when you discovered the dream? Upon entry, you recoiled to the depths of your chair, not because of the terrors within, but the absence of any answers. You tore your headphones off like you did in Dark Bramble, sheepishly tiptoeing through a dimly lit lodge until the anxiety became so overwhelming you began to cower in one of its forgotten corners, waiting for the heat death of the universe, something familiar yet ultimately more terrifying to scoop you away from what was merely unknown. This caused you to take many breaks. At first, you refused to continue playing after the sun went down outside, even in the comfort of your own home. There were so many opportunities to drop the game and move forward without looking back, to give in to your fear. But you kept coming back. 12 hour breaks became only an hour, then just a few minutes to catch your breath before diving back in. Each time you re-entered the dream, you came closer and closer to accepting full immersion with that which you feared. First, your headphones around your neck, then one ear, then half of the other, an inch here and a centimeter there until you had fully embraced the cold, dark night. Steven, in 2022, you gazed into the literal face of death. There wasn't much more to fear. It is difficult to say where this fear stems from. One might say it's instinctual, where another might say this behavior was learned through years of bouncing off, sometimes even the slightest resistance. What matters more than understanding where it came from is how you choose to deal with it. That's why I'm writing to you, Stephen. We've been here before, at a crossroads between a familiar destination or the making of a change. That's why you need to remember this year. To remember, while one path may be understood and comfortable, every step you take down the other scary, less trodden path is another step towards unquestionable growth. Go forward and keep asking the world questions. Continue to discover who you are. Wake up and embrace the world's friction while you can and take with you what you've learned while embracing that which you fear. Do not fear that which you do not understand. Thank you to my patrons for funding the production of videos just like this. I also want to give a special shout out to my producers, Julian Mesmer and Questing Refuge. If you'd like to support the channel, consider checking out my page for early access to videos and other bonus content. Thank you for watching.